at Studio One, we'll tell you how one lost life has created a chain reaction of kindness. Also, one woman's yard transforms in October to something scary. And in our Studio One Spotlight, we'll follow a woman on a long-awaited journey outside of her own home. From the University of North Dakota, this is Studio One, celebrating 25 years. Hi everyone and welcome to Studio One. I'm Monty Cashel. And I'm Katie Fletcher. Well, you know, everyone wants to get the best deal. Oh, absolutely. You know, whether it's, you know, car deals or a deal on a house. Mm -hmm. oh, especially the, the big ticket items for sure. There's a lot to lose or gain. Right, and sometimes people will even go as far as using deception. Mm -hmm. You know, and actually later we get to meet a woman who has taught a class about negotiating. And there's kind of this overall general perception that, you know, men are usually the ones that make the big deals. Yeah. But, you know, she kind of breaks down these perceptions with her class. Okay, and, and teaches women how to negotiate Right, them. women negotiating skills. All right, excellent. Well, we'll look forward to that uh, discussion later in the show. First, kids thrive in an environment where they feel safe and respected. Learn about a movement across the country where students accept the challenge to make a difference in their schools. And unmanned planes are putting more traffic in the air. Later, we'll meet a man who is testing these aircrafts and their safety in our skies. Before we get to all of that, here's today's news with Ali Strand. Thanks, Monty and Katie. Experts say the second presidential debate held on Tuesday did not have a clear winner. What was clear is how both candidates are working hard to woo women voters. The focus of the debate was based largely on women's issues. The candidates touched on topics like equal pay, contraception, and the economy. Mitt Romney's binders full of women comment quickly turned into the night's hottest topic. He mentioned it during a discussion of gender inequality on the job. Before Tuesday's debate, Romney was one point behind President Obama with female voters. The last debate will be held on October 22nd and will focus on foreign policy. Federal authorities arrested a 21-year-old man from Bangladesh Wednesday morning. Kwasi Mohammed Nafis planned to, planned to bomb the New York branch of the Federal Reserve. The thousand-pound bomb he made turned out to be a fake. He was unaware that he was being helped by an undercover FBI agent. Nafis came to the U.S. on a student visa with plans to carry out a terror attack on U.S. soil. Federal agents believed he acted entirely on his own and did not direct by any terror group. Nafis says he was inspired by Al-Qaeda. High chairs can be a mom's best friend when it comes to feeding their baby, but these high-top feeding tables can be dangerous. In the past two months, Consumer Reports have issued a safety warning on two popular high chairs. A wood high chair by Graco has been responsible for at least 58 reports of defective seats. The seats could become loose or even detached from the base. Although there have been some problems with the manufacturing, there are some tactics parents can do to prevent these accidents. Well, I think people look at a high chair as being something that is there. Uh, they put their child in it and strap it in, and then they just think that they uh, can serve somewhat as a babysitter for the child and a, and a guardian for the child, when in fact any infant product really needs to have adult supervision around it. Experts say the safest chairs are ones with a five-point harness that is used to secure the child. It's estimated that more than 11,000 children end up in emergency rooms each year from injuries related to high chairs. The Pew Research Center says the amount of religious people in the U.S. is declining. One in five adults say they have no religious affiliation. This is a 5% increase in the last five years. Younger Americans make up the most popular, or the most people, who are religiously affiliated. The people with no religion say religious organizations are too concerned with money and power, too focused on rules, and too involved in politics. On the other hand, they also say that religious institutions benefit society by strengthening community bonds and aiding the poor. The 1999 Columbine shooting is said to be among one of the worst massacres to have occurred in the U.S. A positive light that's emerged from the horrific event is the story of Rachel Scott. Years after the death of 17-year-old Columbine High School student Rachel Scott, her story is still being told. As an effort to educate more on bullying and Rachel herself, Rachel's Challenge is a program speaking to students across the U.S. We go into schools, elementary schools, middle schools, high schools throughout the country to share the story of Rachel Scott, who was the first victim of the Columbine High School tragedy back in 1999. The program hopes to inform the public not only on the shooting, but Rachel's life and how she saw kindness as a sign of strength. Rachel's challenge is setting its goals high in educating students and teachers on how they can influence for the better. 
that doesn't take a lot of time, doesn't take a lot of effort. And just being kind to one another, and I think we forget sometimes how easy it is to do and how important it is to do, just to be kind to other people. Rachel's challenge has reached over 18 million people, and it all started with Rachel's idea of simply starting a chain reaction. She lived her life based on that principle of doing acts of kindness, believing that if she doesn't a kind act for somebody, maybe that person would feel compelled to do similar acts to someone else. It's estimated that 160,000 students skip school every day because fear of being bullied. But some say to stop bullying is not enough. Rachel's legacy will live on from those who speak about her and those she's impacted. I'm Stephanie Getzman reporting for Studio One. Rachel's challenge is nationwide. Presenters include actors, NFL players, and Olympians. And that's the news for now. Monty and Katie. Thanks, Allie. I can see how getting involved with something like that is just, it's hard not to get involved if you have right, the opportunity. It's a great cause that you want to help out yeah. with. Well, if you take a look outside, it looks like the wind is blowing the last few leaves. Yeah, we had some um, rain mixed with wind and it was going horizontal. Just not a good mixture. <laughs> well, let's go to Stephanie Waldruff with the weather news to learn more about that. Yeah, you know, all those trees are bare, and that is because of the strong wind that we actually have been seeing throughout the past couple of weeks. The strong winds has caused the National Weather Service to actually issue very many different high wind warnings, and that is what we can expect with a high wind warning is 40 mile per hour sustained wind speeds and gusts of up to 60 miles an hour. And then with the wind advisory, we can expect to see 40 mile per hour wind speeds or wind gusts excuse me, and then lower sustained wind speeds. Now because of these high winds, the National Weather Service has also issued extra caution in these areas because of the blowing winds while driving, because we could be seeing debris blowing across the road, and also because of the rain that much of us are seeing is falling very hard. Now what is causing these strong winds? Well, it's the low pressure system and the high pressure system that is developed in Colorado, and the very large pressure difference in between these two is causing the strong winds in between the two pressure systems. And you can see that on this map with these isobars as we isobars are the white lines on this map are called isobars and once they get closer together and we see a lot of them, that is when we know that there are very strong winds. But by tomorrow, it looks like those winds are going to drop off as we start to see less isobars and they are farther apart. For the rest of the week though, it is going to be cooler up in the Pacific Northwest and then warm for much of the United States, stretching from um, Texas all the way up through the eastern seaboard. And then as far as precipitation goes, it is going to be wet for much of northern, northern United States and dry for the southern part of the United States. Now that brings us to our weather question of the day. When was the last new cloud variety discovered? Our answers range from 1904 to 1993. And later on in the show, we are going to have a story about the clouds. Thanks, Stephanie, for that weather news. Wow. Mm -hmm. So there, one of the options there was 1993 that... Right, that's fairly recent. It's mm -hmm. like... I think clouds have been around forever, haven't they? Yeah. Shouldn't we have found them all by now? <laughs> right. right, you'd think so. Well, let's uh, turn now to sports and some sports highlights with Brian Gendro. Well, thanks, Monty and Katie. As we move from the beauty of fall to the snow of winter, more than just the weather changes. It's also a time when people begin to move their exercise activities from the cold outside to the warmth of the gym. Cross country is a sport that is affected by the changing seasons. Runners are forced to brave the elements during outdoor meets. This means runners must also train in the frigid temperatures to be prepared. Distance runners train for endurance, but, take, but precautions should be taken before venturing out. Extra warm-ups, layers of clothing, and different types of workouts all accommodate One the One of the weather. biggest things is that you have to have a lot of clothes on, so you can't necessarily run as fast. But one of the things we do with our distance people, at least, is we take take them out on the roads, and then if it's a windy day, we'll drop them off and they can run in. While some say running in the cold is beneficial, Runner's World says frozen lungs can come from breathing in cold air. It's now time for the Studio One Sports Trivia question. What is the name of the trophy given to the winner of the World Series? Your choices are the Dick Hauser, the Commissioners, the Warren C. Giles, and the Calder Memorial. And the answer to that question will be up later in the show. That's the sports for now. Monty and Katie? Thanks, Brian. Most people wouldn't dream of their high school teacher becoming a mixed martial arts fighter. In Here Comes the Boom, actor Kevin Jane James takes on the role of that ambitious teacher. We'll preview the film. And partnerships are important when it comes to teamwork. 
Next, we'll meet a man who works with partners at the national level to improve the safety of flying. Life is busy, but many professionals are finding ways to advance their career with a Master's in Business Administration at the University of North Dakota. Students attend UND online and on campus. The program is nationally recognized and emphasizes one-on-one -on -one with faculty. Find the title you deserve. Enroll today. At the University of North Dakota College of Engineering and Mines, classes have real-life application. Mentors guide students. Our work improves quality of life by answering tough questions with creativity and innovation. The University of North Dakota College of Engineering and Mines, training tomorrow's engineering and geology experts today. What does cancer look like? What about diabetes, heart disease? Medical laboratory professionals are a vital link in the treatment of disease and maintenance of health. They investigate clues found in the body that will direct patient care. The University of North Dakota's laboratory science programs are some of the most innovative, far-reaching, fully accredited programs in the nation. The UND School of Medicine and Health Sciences can help you become one of the few who see beneath the surface. This scene is familiar, but you and your friends are at risk. One in three Americans will die from heart disease or stroke. Think about it. One in three. Every day, more than 2,000 Americans die from cardiovascular disease. The Million Hearts Initiative works to prevent one million heart attacks and strokes. Understand the risks, get active, and reduce sodium and trans fats in your diet. It's a silent killer, but now is the time to take control of your health. Learn more about making a heart-healthy future. You're watching Studio One, your source for news, weather, sports, and entertainment. That's a shot of our good-looking studio audience today. Well, aviation is an important aspect of our society. Safety is always a factor when it comes to flying. Atmospheric scientist Mark Askelson is helping test how unmanned aircraft can fly safely in our skies. Thanks for coming on the show today. Thank you, Monty. It's a privilege. Well, Unmanned aircraft systems, are it's a rapidly growing field, a lot of research going on right now, and uh, University of North Dakota Aerospace, it's a logical fit to be studying this sort of thing. What is the ba basic purpose of the testing that you recently were a part of? Sure, sure. So, uh, you know, one of the challenges with unmanned aircraft is you don't have a human on board to see and avoid other aircraft, and that's a requirement of, of pilots. So that's a big challenge. Um, our ability to fly on an aircraft in the airspace is limited because of that inability to see and avoid. So we were testing a methodology for trying to accomplish that um, so that we can safely fly um, because while unmanned aircraft can do all kinds of wonderful things for us, if we are not safe with them, that's not okay. Sure. Well, what is UND's role in all of this? Sure. So, you know, UND, um, you know, we provided one of the aircraft. Um, we, we flew these encounters with, an, um, um, uh, with the NASA Langley aircraft. Um, so we provided one of the aircraft. We provided a lot of the coordination. Um, we've developed algorithms for testing the, um, basically ran algorithms and said, these algorithms will say, okay, these aircraft are getting close. I don't like this. Let's move here to deconflict the aircraft. So we, you know, we had a multifaceted role in the project. Okay. What were some of the steps that had to be taken before getting to, to test day? Sure. So, you know, certainly we had to establish the, the, the overall project and get all the partners together. You know, we're very lucky. We're, we have the MITRE Corporation, we have Draper Laboratories, we have NASA Langley, we have NDSU, we have UND, we have the North Dakota National Guard. We had to bring this whole team together so that we could actually accomplish that. That took a while. Um, and then we had to, you know, lay out our strategy of how we would accomplish this. So, it, you know, it's a multi-year process in the end. Um, 
and then you know we had to get everything ready and then execute it. So. Well, test day is always fun, right? Right. You do all this setup, and then you finally get get to thing things to happen. Right. Um, what did you expect to happen on test day before test day? The day before. What yeah. You so you know we were pretty confident. I mean, we we had a, a you know we we had. I mean, we had done everything we needed to do to be ready for this. And so, um, you know, we expected we were going to be able to uh, obtain the data we needed to obtain. And it turns out, and, and we had a two-week period of, of data collection, and, and we were able to obtain more data than we expected we would. So, so everything worked great. Um, and, uh, you know, that's, that's um, a result of uh, the team working together very well. So we're very fortunate. Well, and... Uh how did you feel the day of testing? The day comes, are you nervous? Yeah, you know, to be honest with you, I'm not. I mean, um, it's, it's kind of fun. You know, there's all this buildup and you're trying to get ready and then, and then you finally get to execute. And, and that's a nice feeling. It's, it's a little bit like giving a presentation. Um, you do a lot of work to get ready for it and finally you get to do that. And, sure. and that's a good day. Well, we have some video of you doing the testing. Kind of walk sure. us through uh, what was being tested here. Sure. So, so we're, we're testing algorithms that are intended to sense where our aircraft are relative to your aircraft and identify when you may have a conflict. And if you may have a conflict, the algorithms are intended to kick in automatically um, and to maneuver you so that there isn't a conflict. Like we see now the air plane is kind of peeling off and sure, that's sure. what so should happen? Exactly. That's exactly what should happen. And, and so, um, you know, we're, we're doing this using something called ADS-B. It's a certain type of sensor. Other people are, are studying other approaches to this, um, but there's some advantages to this. ADS-B is very accurate. Um, and you can, what we're trying to do is automatic maneuvers. Um, and that's useful with an unmanned aircraft because you can lose link with your unmanned aircraft. So you may know that you have a conflict, but if you can't Control your aircraft at that sure. exact moment. There's a, there's a potential problem. So this is an onboard this technology. This is onboard, so right it, on the aircraft. So even if the person who's controlling the aircraft lets go of the controls, it still will. It it is still avoiding other aircraft. Okay. That's the idea. Now I have to mention when looking at that video, there were people inside those planes. Yes, and absolutely. Explain that. Sure. We're we're talking about unmanned aircraft. Sure. So so what we did is we flew in counters, and what we did is we we kept the aircraft at separate altitudes. So there was no way we could ever be at co-altitude and actually be in, have a collision risk. However, we tricked one aircraft into thinking they were co-altitude. That way we could get the algorithms to, to kick in and do their thing. Um, but the NASA aircraft, UND provided one aircraft. The NASA aircraft is a circuit UAS, which means that the pilot can flip it into UAS mode and it flies like an unmanned aircraft. However, the pilot is still on board, can see and avoid, and can can basically keep that flight safe and, and follow all of the flight rules, all of the applicable flight rules. And, sure. and, and it's, so it's a safe test, but you can get your data. So it's both an unmanned and a manned it's aircraft. It's both a man, unmanned and manned. Sure. Right. Okay. And what is the biggest thing that you found out during this testing period? Well, you know, we're still analyzing the data to see how, how well the algorithm performed. Obviously, we were able to watch them in real time and see them do some very good things. You know, we're, we're trying to really determine what's working, what's not, what, what, what the potential is here, so that we can provide the information to decision makers down the road who have to say, how are we going to accomplish this? Well, we have information that helps us do that. But probably the biggest thing that I got out of it was the, um, the great relationship and the great interaction among the partners. It was phenomenal. Um, and everybody worked incredibly hard, um, but functioned as a, as a cohesive unit, and that was really a fun. Sure. Fun well, time. good luck with the next test. I'm sure there's more down the road. Oh, here. thank you. All right. Appreciate it. Thanks, Mark. Okay. Coming up, tractor tires, PVC pipes, and ropes may seem like random items you'd find at a store. Meet one man who uses them for an intense workout. Also, it's safe to say many people love to decorate. We'll meet a woman who brings out her decorations extra early. She enjoys making her yard extra spooky. Hi, we all work at Valley News Live in Fargo. We're all UND and Studio One alumni. Congratulations, Congratulations Studio, Studio One, on 25 great years. Studio One closed captioning is underwritten in part by Options, your disability information source. It's 
not the size of the woman in the fight. It's the size of the fight in the woman. My doctor tells me to play outside every day. I see a physician assistant in my rural clinic. I'm glad that she's here. But health care is changing. Rural North Dakota communities face workforce shortages, particularly in primary care. The University of North Dakota School of Medicine and Health Sciences addresses the state's health care needs by educating the next generation of health care professionals. We advocate for improved health in rural communities. Your future depends on this moment. Take the path that leads to your future. The University of North Dakota is a place where students thrive, where personal connections matter, where classmates become friends, where leading scholars become mentors. Experience our expertise. Creative, innovative, entrepreneurial, spirited. This is the University of North Dakota. Many students look up to their high school teachers. The new movie, Here Comes the Boom, brings that heroism to a whole new level. Kevin James plays a high school biology teacher. His school's music program is threatened by budget cuts. He decides to enter cage fights and donate his winning prize money to save the program. He faces doubts and criticism, especially from the school nurse, played by Salma Hayek. The school eventually rallies behind him as this lazy school teacher battles to become a hero. I became a huge fan of the sport uh, way back in 1993 when the UFC started, uh, and I've watched pretty much almost every event since then. James worked with several mixed martial arts fighters to prepare for the film. He admits his proudest accomplishment during training was knocking out a professional boxer. Here Comes the Boom is playing in theaters with a PG rating. Now it's time to look at the events happening in your area. Halloween is just around the corner. One woman goes a bit further than just fighting the old jack-o'-lantern. And I can see one just up ahead. On the way home from daycare, Gracie Orr looks forward to a special stop. Scary! What is this? Halloween house! Not really the house, it's just my yard. <laughs> Kelly Straub is the creator of the Halloween yard. It's just grown every year. Kelly starts building her ghouls and goblins in August. Each year she chooses a new theme for her spooky scene. This year we went with um, a formal dinner party. With maids and butlers and chairs full of the undead, Kelly transforms her front lawn into an eerie dinner soiree. We went earrings and necklaces and headpieces and because they're at a dinner party. <laughs> I mean, come on, let's dress for it. It's the attention to detail that sets Kelly's creations apart. The elaborate display draws a faithful audience. I've gotten thank you letters. Um, they'll call, they stop by three or four times a day. She says it's people's responses that motivate her to keep decorating every year. It's just funny, just people's reactions, and that's why I do it. So Halloween yard fans like Gracie can continue to look forward to a special trip down Kelly Street. <laughs> Which one's your favorite? Um, I like the witch. You like the witch? Yes, yeah, she's funny. <laughs> With photographer Kelby Leak, this is Katie Malali reporting for Studio One. Kelly and her family serve hot cocoa and candy on Halloween night. Last year, they quit counting after 775 trick-or-treaters. 
Coming up, for the first time since 1951, classifying a new cloud variety is on the horizon. We'll show you that what it, this unique formation looks like and how you can identify it. That story plus news, sports, and weather in the next half hour of Studio One. Closed captioning for Studio One is underwritten in part by NDAD, helping others to help themselves. At the University of North Dakota College of Engineering and Mines, classes have real-life application. Mentors guide students. Our work improves quality of life by answering tough questions with creativity and innovation. The University of North Dakota College of Engineering and Mines, training tomorrow's engineering and geology experts today. Life is busy, but many professionals are finding ways to advance their career with a Master's in Business Administration at the University of North Dakota. Students attend UND online and on campus. The program is nationally recognized and emphasizes one-on-one -on -one with faculty. Find the title you deserve. Enroll today. What does cancer look like? What about diabetes, heart disease? Medical laboratory professionals are a vital link in the treatment of disease and maintenance of health. They investigate clues found in the body that will direct patient care. The University of North Dakota's laboratory science programs are some of the most innovative, far-reaching, fully accredited programs in the nation. The UND School of Medicine and Health Sciences can help you become one of the few who see beneath the surface. From the University of North Dakota, celebrating 25 years, this is Studio One. Welcome back to Studio One. Thanks for joining us today. One of the topics we will be chatting about is uh, one that's caused quite a bit of, of controversy in New York. Some high schools have been uh, introduced to a pilot program where contraceptives are being given out to students if they want them. Right, not only birth control, but they're also offering Plan B, or more commonly referred to as the morning after pill. Right, and of course, the reason for this controversy is they're trying it because some, uh, I think the dropout rate was something like seven in 10 uh, teens who do become pregnant drop out of school. They mm -hmm. want that to stop. They want to keep kids in school. Right. And uh, so they're trying to prevent unwanted pregnancies, but at the same time... The parents, you know, they think that that's an issue that they should have control of and that, you know, the schools shouldn't. should be able to distribute it. To right. Them. So we went out on the street and we asked people their opinions and their answers are going to be later in the show. Also coming up in the next 30 minutes on Studio One, most parents say their kids grow up way too fast. We'll tell you how some are getting an even earlier start in college classes than before. Also, we are constantly reminded to enjoy the simple things. We'll tell you the story of one woman who gains the freedom to do exactly that. And people generally have a hard time compromising. Sometimes they may even use deception to get what they want. Later, we will talk to a woman who uses her negotiating experience to educate others. But first, here's today's news with Ali Strand. Thanks, Monty and Katie. A federal court in New York overturned legislation against gay marriage on Thursday. The court found the Defense of Marriage Act discriminated against homosexual couples. Chief Judge Dennis Jacobs found the act unconstitutional because he says it denied federal benefits to same-sex couples. New York is one of six states that have legalized gay marriage. This is the second federal appeals court to reject the legislation that was passed in 1996. Gay advocacy organizations say the next stop is the Supreme Court. 
A nearly 15,000 page file documenting sexual abuse cases against Boy Scouts was released on Thursday. The release of the confidential documents was approved by Oregon Supreme Court. The Boy Scout files unveiled the secrecy of alleged sexual abuse by troop leaders and volunteers. The file includes cases from the last 30 years. Lawyers for the victims say the documents report instances of alleged abuse by over 1,200 Scout Masters and adult volunteers. As the beginning of November edges near, many hunters are excited for the deer gun opening season opener. While the Midwest was the victim of drought this summer, there are hidden benefits from the lack of rain. The drought has dried the ground, allowing hunters to get around easier. Dead cornfields are being removed, which leaves less cover for bucks. Game and fish experts say that field conditions may be good come November, which is a far cry from previous seasons. You know, our weather is so variable, it, it can be anywhere from bluebird days to just plain cold and wet and miserable out. While conditions may look good for the opener, Eglin says hunters still need to take precaution. They should be careful of where they park due to risk of starting grass fires. This can be caused as easily as tailpipes rubbing against dried brush or grass. Sleeping on the job is usually associated with reprimand, but now more and more companies find it beneficial for their employees to power nap during work hours. The benefits of snoozing while at work can be increased alertness, enhanced brain power, and fewer sick days. The phenomenon started in Japan where innovators created sleeping capsules. Here, hardworking men and women could come for a nap when having a rough day at the office. In the U.S., Pizza Hut and Google are two of the companies that let their hired hand fit a siesta in their daily schedule. High school students are learning that they are college material. Some now have the option of taking credits that do double the duty. Colleges expect incoming freshmen to meet many requirements. Some high schools are making the transition to college easier. North Dakota's Board of Higher Education has extended the option of dual credit to sophomores. They're dual credit. They count for high school credit as well as college credit at the same time, so it's really quite a bonus for the kids. Teens are able to save money as well as get the hands-on education they need. Strandall says the learning environment is friendlier and encourages students to ask questions. I decided to do dual credit because I figured it was going to be cheaper for me and the book is provided and everything like that and I thought being in a classroom with a teacher who is willing to help me rather than being with 300 other students. Nikki is one of 140 students in her high school getting a jump start on college. As kids are on the fence of picking a major, the dual credit option is an opportunity to plan ahead. I find kids to be very driven and very motivated to do well and really looking for every advantage they can get when it comes to what they do after high school. Strandell says that students have changed for the past decade and are seeking higher education earlier. Dual credit courses help them pick up better study habits earlier on, as well as put in the extra effort. I don't feel like I'm smarter, I just feel like I'm, a, I'm willing to do more work for it. And this will just make my life easier when I get to college. With the dual credit option, students gain confidence to succeed and get a realistic expectation of what college classes are like. I'm Cecilia Engeseth, reporting for Studio One. Before, dual credit classes were only offered to juniors and seniors. Most courses are three credits each. And that's the news for now. Monty and Katie. Thanks a lot, Allie. I could see how getting a jump start on some of those things could be a good idea. Yeah, that'd be great. Some of these kids come in as a sophomore mm. with credits. Yeah. So, that's great. All right, well, it's time now for the weather news with Stephanie Waldreff. Well, thanks, Katie and Monty. On October 16th, we had a strong storm system move through northwest or north central Idaho, excuse me. And because of that storm system, it caused many trees to be slammed to the ground and on top of buildings. One of these trees hit a middle school, and one 65 foot tree fell on a golf course in Twin Falls, Idaho, which then caused the golf course to be closed the following day. Along with the trees, many small power lines were also downed, and because of all of the 
All of the damage, the city of Twins Falls opened up a wood waste collection site to give people a place to throw away their branch, branches and other wooden debris. Now, the storm, now, with the storm system, there were 11 total wind reports reported, and with some of these, they had 70 plus mile per hour reported. So, there was very strong winds, and because of those strong winds, they saw some structural damage along with the fallen trees, the tree branches, and the power lines as well. So, it was a very strong storm system. Now, there's a new cloud in town, and maybe you've seen it. Sometimes, when looking up at the sky, every white puff seems to be an animal like an elephant or a crocodile. But these clouds are scientifically classified just like animals. The genera, uh, that breaks them down into ten categories. And then they have species and subspecies um, below that. The International Cloud Atlas defines a wide variety of cloud species. And some of these clouds are pretty rare. You don't see them very often. In fact, I sometimes think maybe they were only seen once, but they made it into the International Cloud Atlas. Normally, these meteorological animals floating through the sky are puffy cumulus clouds. The cumulonimbus cloud is a more dangerous predator. This is the, the thunderstorm. This is, this is the big weather maker. This is where we get lightning and thunder. This is lots of things happening in cumulonimbus clouds. Now, there is a new animal attempting to make its way into the International Cloud Atlas. Its name is Undulatus asperatus, Latin for agitated waves. The Undulatus is a typical wave type cloud. This ominous cloud forms when warm and cool air meet. However, this new animal has yet to be officially classified. I'm Brianna Kump, reporting for Studio One Weather. And we're not quite sure when the cloud first formed, but it really became popular in 2006 when a photo went viral on the internet. Now that brings us to our weather question of the day. When was the last cloud, when was the last new cloud when was the last new cloud variety discovered? Our answers range from 1904 to 1993, and the correct answer is actually 1951, and the last new cloud almanac was actually issued in 1975. Thanks, Stephanie, for that weather information. You're welcome. A cloud almanac. Yeah, that sounds really interesting. <laughs> you never know. <laughs> Some people are just, you know, they love that stuff. Yes. Like Stephanie. Exactly. All right, well, let's go to Brian Gendra for one <laughs> last look at sports. Thanks, Monty and Katie. Working out can be a tedious chore for many, but one fitness routine adds more variety to the everyday workout. Motivating people to work out is what this trainer likes to do. Dustin McWilliams has grown up being an active person and enjoys seeing others become successful. I've just been into fitness my whole life, um, just kind of sports uh, in, in high school and stuff like that. And then after high school, I didn't have you know a ton to do for sports, so just picked up exercise and different things like tire flips. Tire flips are exactly what it sounds like. This along with other everyday materials can make for a unique and fun fitness routine. It gets your heart rate up and you're using, even though you don't feel like you're using every muscle, uh, everything's working, everything's firing, your core's firing. Moving tractor tires may leave you reaching for the Advil, but Dustin says it can really benefit the muscles in your body. Everything, <laughs> every single muscle even muscles that you didn't know you had. Changing the way you go about things makes it seem like not a workout at all. It's refreshing. You're not going in, getting on the treadmill, lifting weights, doing the things that you have to do almost every other season of the year. Whether you're an outdoors person or not, going outside and changing the normal routine will get you motivated. With photographer Taylor Nelson, I'm Kyle Searockers, reporting for Studio One. Dustin says tires and PVC pipe can be an easy and affordable alternative to weights. His group meets once a week for their tire boot camp. Now the answer to this week's Studio One sports trivia question. What is the name of the trophy given to the winner of the World Series? The answer is the Commissioner's Trophy, and that award should be hoisted by the winner of the MLB season in a couple weeks. And that's the sports. Monty and Katie. Thanks so much, Brian. Plan B, commonly referred as to as the morning after pill, is now being offered in New York City public high schools. Some think this is a reasonable way to reduce abortion and unwanted pregnancies. Others think the availability of birth control encourages teen sex. We wanted your thoughts on if high schools should be able to provide birth control to students. Your opinions are still to come. 
Also, simple acts of kindness can mean a lot. We'll show you how a college fraternity reaches out to a woman who has seen the same scenery for almost a year. That's next. This scene is familiar, but you and your friends are at risk. One in three Americans will die from heart disease or stroke. Think about it, one in three. Every day, more than 2,000 Americans die from cardiovascular disease. The Million Hearts Initiative works to prevent one million heart attacks and strokes. Understand the risks, get active, and reduce sodium and trans fats in your diet. It's a silent killer, but now is the time to take control of your health. Learn more about making a heart healthy future. At the University of North Dakota College of Engineering and Mines, classes have real-life application. Mentors guide students. Our work improves quality of life by answering tough questions with creativity and innovation. The University of North Dakota College of Engineering and Mines, training tomorrow's engineering and geology experts today. What does cancer look like? What about diabetes, heart disease? Medical laboratory professionals are a vital link in the treatment of disease and maintenance of health. They investigate clues found in the body that will direct patient care. The University of North Dakota's laboratory science programs are some of the most innovative, far-reaching, fully accredited programs in the nation. The UND School of Medicine and Health Sciences can help you become one of the few who see beneath the surface. Most people don't know what it's like to be an entrepreneur. My time clock is around the clock. My ideas are fresh, but they need research and development. My business plan includes marketing strategies, legal documents, and a budget. My startup became possible through mentorship, hands-on experience, and learning from experts in the field. The Center for Innovation has contributed to more than 400 University of North Dakota student startups. Come with an idea. Leave with a business. You're watching Studio One from the University of North Dakota in Grand Forks. Some people get anxious when they are separated from their house. We met a woman who redefines what it means to be homesick. Tranquil, serene, and quaint is one way to describe this house on Seward Avenue. This residence is home to Barbara Harpster and her five other tenants. The companions I have are my cats, you know but they can't talk to you, you know? At age 58, Barb has dealt with her share of hardships. I didn't realize how important it is just to be able to walk, stand upright and walk. A couple of years ago, Barb was diagnosed with fibromyalgia, neuropathy, and lymphedema. It would feel like you're, you're burning, you know, your legs. As Barb lost strength, she began to live a more sedentary lifestyle. The middle of November of last year is when I got home from the hospital and I haven't been out of the house since. 11 months, to be more precise. Barb says there is agony in being a prisoner of your own home. You just don't know how, how much longer you can go on. It's, it's just too painful. I hope I never get to the point where I give up. But, uh, you know, God gave me life and it's not up to me to take it. Who would have guessed that a college fraternity project <laughs> would be the answer Barb was looking for? Not being able to go outside for a year and she still has her, like, humor and she still um, seems to think positively. It's, like, that's amazing. That would just emotionally devastate most people. In one charitable act, this fraternity is building Barb a ramp to freedom. You wouldn't know how happy I was. I was just as pleased as could be. Yes. Oh, this is nice. I can actually come and sit in the summertime. I can enjoy the birds and, and you know, the breeze and the sounds and there's a little squirrel that runs back and forth on the fence between the two houses here. He likes to tease the cats, you know. Leaves that blow in the wind, birds chirping in the trees, 
And the feeling of sun upon your face may be simple things, but for Barb, it is the basic necessities that mean the most. It's been so long since I've been outside. I just appreciate it, I really do. I'm Corey Robertson, reporting for Studio One. Pi Kappa Phi is the fraternity in charge of building Barb's Ramp. It's the only Greek organization in the country that created its own philanthropy. Schools often pass out permission slips and pencils, but New York City students can bring something else home. To reduce the 7 out of 10 dropout rate by pregnant teenage girls, 13 New York City schools are providing access to the morning after pill. This measure is part of a pilot program. It provides birth control methods to schools with higher pregnancy rates and less access to health care. We wanted your thoughts on if it is a good idea for school to be passing out birth control to students. Absolutely. I think the impact on that, uh, as far as fiscally and locally, is wonderful. I think it would be a better idea to like go for prevention instead of something like Plan B. Kids are going to be having sex with or without their parents' consent. So I think if schools were handing out birth control or condoms or whatever, anything like that, it would be a good, a good idea. I don't think it's the government's business to um, hand out birth control pills in the high school. People have to get birth control someplace because they don't have the willpower to go for abstinence. I don't. I think it starts at home. I think that they should be teaching their children abstinence. I don't see why it would be such a big deal preventing teenage pregnancies. Most girls that age aren't ready to have a kid. Pregnancy is a very personal thing and I think it should be dealt with um, with the parents. Lots of discussion on Facebook about this issue as well. From Grand Forks, North Dakota, Mike says that's horrible. The mayor needs to go. We should be responsible for our own behavior and not be coddled by a government which constantly reminds us consequences don't exist. Another from, from Samuel in St. Paul, Minnesota. Communities bringing forth realistic and proactive plans to assist teenagers to avoid unwanted pregnancies and abortions need to be considered and encouraged. Still to come, throughout history, women have rarely been seen as big negotiators. This is changing with equality in the workplace. Next, we will meet a woman who encourages others to hone in on their negotiating skills. Studio One is a television show produced by students at the University of North Dakota. You can be a part of the graphics team, the marketing team, news team, programming team, production team. Training never ends. You get to produce gas, you get to do the reporting side of it. It's really worth the experience. You will not regret it. This scene is familiar, but you and your friends are at risk. One in three Americans will die from heart disease or stroke. Think about it. One in three. Every day, more than 2,000 Americans die from cardiovascular disease. The Million Hearts Initiative works to prevent one million heart attacks and strokes. Understand the risks, get active, and reduce sodium and trans fats in your diet. It's a silent killer, but now is the time to take control of your health. Learn more about making a heart-healthy future. My doctor tells me to play outside every day. I see a physician assistant in my rural clinic. I'm glad that she's here. But health care is changing. Rural North Dakota communities face workforce shortages, particularly in primary care. The University of North Dakota School of Medicine and Health Sciences addresses the state's health care needs by educating the next generation of health care professionals. We advocate for improved health in rural communities. It's not the size of the woman in the fight, it's the size of the fight in the woman.
For years, men have been seen as the ones making the big deals, whether it is for salary, a new car, or the price on a home. Director of the University of North Dakota Conflict Resolution Center, Christine Peronica, is here to talk about how perceptions in a negotiation are changing. Thanks so much for coming on the show today. Yeah, you're welcome. Thank you. You, you teach a course that deals with negotiating skills for women. Why the separation of genders with this topic? Well, to be honest, um, I teach a, a class in the law school that deals with negotiation, at least in, in about a third of the class. And I started noticing some differences between the male and female law students. And um, secondly, there was some uh, my colleagues around the country who were teaching classes like this. And I started to think, you know, maybe there are still some pretty significant gender differences that exist. And this is one place that is sort of related to what I do um, at work. Yeah, and let's talk a little bit about the experience you've had working. What experience have you had with negotiation? Well, of course, personal experiences. <laughs> I always say um, I always win at home, but I think um, <laughs> when I go out into other areas, maybe I don't win as often. But uh, um, I think we all negotiate frequently. We ne negotiate for raises. We negotiate for um, cars and homes and all of those kinds of things. So we, we all can kind of draw on those experiences and learn from them. And we don't always take into account how to negotiate before we move into those situations. We just go and all of a sudden we're faced with it. Yeah. What are the key components you cover with the class? We start out by talking about whether or not the gender differences that, are, that have been researched out there are really true or accurate or if they're myths. So maybe looking at, you know, do women always, you know, lose on the car lot? Are they always charged more by people doing repair work in their home or on their car? And um, in the couple of classes that I've taught so far, some women agree that definitely those stereotypes, those gender stereotypes are still out there and that happens. And a few disagreed that they're not seeing that as much anymore. Where do women perhaps lack in negotiation compared to men and vice versa? I think that um, most of what I've read indicate that when it comes to pretty high stakes competitive bargaining where you're bargaining um, for yourself, for, for example, a raise or a, or a position, or um, in competitive negotiations that, f for example, between lawyers and high stakes deals, research shows that women aren't doing as well in those negotiations as men, that they fare better in other types of negotiated settings. That's not all women, but maybe a majority. Right, and what are some of these skills that people need to be a successful negotiator? I think um, the skill that they need most is to recognize what they really want. That it's really in preparation. What are you bargaining for? What do you want? What's your reservation price if you're purchasing something? What are you not willing to give up? And really being clear about those things. Women have a tendency to maybe give up more. Um, in negotiations. Um, but on the other hand, they tend to be more collaborative and have an opportunity or a, an ability to expand sort of the, the pool of what's being bargained for. So maybe they don't get their raise, but maybe they bargain for more vacation time or more time off or more flexible hours, which for women oftentimes, if they're also the caregiver of kids, is more important than a salary increase. And yeah, there's a difference between you know men and women negotiating. Is there are there different negotiators? Yeah, I think people have different styles. There's sort of a, the go-to natural style. Um, some are some people are naturally competitive in their style. Some are naturally cooperative. Um, some are more naturally collaborative. Those are, might be three different styles. Um, some people aren't are, are more focused on relationship than on goals, and so they tend to negotiate less, wanting to just salvage their relationship. Um, and some are fairly typical avoiders. Um, most bargaining is sort of um, categorized in either competitive, sort of win-lose, I want to win it all or, or not at all, um, or in more of um, cooperative or interest-based or integrative, it's considered bargaining. And now with negotiation, there's always that question of how far will someone go? What are some of the ethics behind negotiating? There's quite a few ethics behind negotiating, and some of them affect the stuff we negotiate for every day, like the sale of a home or a car. And one of the most interesting things that people find out, um, because they expect you to do some puffing, they expect you to ask for more than maybe something's worth. worth. That's kind of how we, we learn how to negotiate. Um, 
But one of the things that my class, my classrooms find very interesting is the fact that if, if I'm going to sell you my car and you're offering me a lower price and I say, well, you know, I've got this other guy, he called me yesterday and he's offered me, you know, this price. Um, and if that's a complete lie, that's considered unethical and possibly fraudulent. But it's, it's pretty difficult to police. You know, how do you prove that I said that? You would have paid a different price had I not said that, a lower price. I might have accepted one. Well, thanks, so, Christine, so much yeah. for coming on the show today. Yeah, thank you. You're watching Studio One from the University of North Dakota. We'll be right back after this. Closed captioning for Studio One is underwritten in part by NDAD, helping others to help themselves. size of the woman in the fight is the size of the fight in the woman. The University of North Dakota is a place where students thrive, where they learn from leading experts, share in discoveries and create knowledge. Experience our expertise. Creative. Innovative. Entrepreneurial. Spirited. This is the University of North Dakota. Your future depends on this moment. Take the path that leads to your future. Studio One is a television show produced by students at the University of North Dakota. You can be a part of the graphics team, the marketing team, news team, programming team, production team. Training never ends. You get to produce gas, you get to do the reporting side of it. It's really worth the experience. You will not regret it. Most people don't know what it's like to be an entrepreneur. My time clock is around the clock. My ideas are fresh, but they need research and development. My business plan includes marketing strategies, legal documents, and a budget. My startup became possible through mentorship, hands-on experience, and learning from experts in the field. The Center for Innovation has contributed to more than 400 University of North Dakota student startups. Come with an idea. Leave with a business. Tune in next week on Studio One. We'll meet a couple who feature women in a local magazine they have created. Plus, we'll have other news and entertainment stories for you. We're going to leave you now with pictures of a zombie run. Runners competed in a 5K race where hidden zombies would jump out and try to steal flags from the runners. From all of us here at Studio One, have a great week. Thank you.